Hey there, it's great to have you back and uh, welcome to another exciting episode on our series Learn String Manipulation by Building a Cipher. So this video is very important as it's part of the Scientific Computing with Python Certification by FreeCodeCamp. So for those joining us for the first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and stay updated on our coding journey. To catch up with our progress, and I get to get a better grasp of the workflow that we have done so far, check out the previous videos using the link, the card on the top right corner of this video to be updated on what we have covered so far. And to all the returning viewers, hi and welcome back. In today's video, we will be doing more and taking a look, an in-depth look into functions in Python and uh, how they can be manipulated in different ways. So with that said, let's get started. On our previous video, we did up to step number 50, meaning on this one, we'll pick it up from step number 51 all through to step number 60. So let's get started with step number 51. And it reads, to execute a function need to be called or invoked by appending a pair of parentheses after its name like this. This is the syntax. At the end of your code, call your Caesar function, pay attention to the identation. So if you remember earlier on, we created a function which is known called Caesar and we identified all the code that we had previously to be inside the function. So to make the function work or to invoke it, we need to call it by calling the function name followed by the parentheses. So let's do that down here. And pay attention to the identation. So uh, the function should be called at the beginning of the line. So let's check our code to be sure that everything works correctly. And as you can see, we have called the function in a proper way. So let's proceed to the next step. And that's step number 52. Now you should see an output again. As you can see on our console on the right side here, we have an output already. Although this approach works, it doesn't significantly enhance the code's re reusability. Repeatedly calling your function will result in the same outcome. However, functions can be declared with parentheses to introduce versatility and customization. So, to declare functions with parentheses, this is the syntax that is used where we have the dev keyword followed by the function name and inside the brackets is where we add the two parentheses that will be passed within the function followed by the block of code that you want. So parameters are variable that you can use inside your function. A function can be declared with different number of parameters. In the example above, param1 and param2 are parameters. Now on to the task for this challenge. Modify your function declaration so that it takes two parameters called message and offset. So this is our function name. So what you need to do is inside the function name, inside the parentheses, we need to add two parameters, which are message and offset. So let's do that. Message, comma, offset. And let's check our code to be sure everything. And it seems we need uh, to correct the spelling of offset. And uh, let's check again and it passes so let's proceed to the next challenge and that will be step number 53 so inside your function body rename the text and shift variables to message and offset respectively so basically this step requires us inside the function here when where everywhere or whenever we have the text and shift names we need to rename them to be message where we have text it should be renamed to message and where we have shift, it should be renamed into offset, respectively. So the easier way to approach this is like a, we are going to begin at the top of the function, moving downward the code block so that we don't miss a step. So uh, we will be looking for, uh, here is our first encounter with text, so we should replace, replace it with message. Uh, as we move down, uh, we are looking for text and shift text and shift here is shift so let's replace this with offset 
and uh, let's continue here is again text so let's replace this with message and i believe that will be all and now let's check our code to be sure we did not miss a step and as you can see everything was correctly so let's proceed to the next step and that will be step number 54 so right now your code can't execute and that's true because if you look at the console on the right side it's blank because the scissor function is defined with two parameters that's message and offset but it's called with no arguments and that's true give message and offset values by passing text and shift as the arguments to the scissor function so um in order for us to get an output definitely this step is telling us inside the function where we have invoked the function we should pass in text and shift as the arguments so let's do that text comma shift and as you can see immediately after we finish typing shift we got an output on our console so and uh, maybe you should you are wondering why we are calling text and shift yet we change the values inside our function well the main reason we are doing that is because at the top here we still have the two names the two variables still unchanged and that's the reason why we are getting the output so let's proceed to the next step and that is step number 55 whereby it says at the bottom of, of your code after your existing scissor text shift call call your function again this time pass the text variable with an integer of 13 as arguments so at the bottom we need to call again the scissor function and inside the function we need to pass to into arguments that's text and integer 13 as the variables so let's check to see if we have done it correctly and it seems we missed a step we read again at the bottom of your code after your existing scissor and text call this uh -huh, call your function again call your function again this time pass the text variable and the integer 13 as argument so ah uh, yeah so uh we need uh, we did a misspelling do uh, while calling the function name so let's check on that and as you can see uh by doing it correctly we get an output on the right side here and uh, let's proceed to the next step and that will be step number 56 currently every single letter is always encrypted with the same letter depending on the specified offset what if the offset were different for each letter that will be much more difficult to decrypt this algorithm is referred to as as the vinegar cipher where the offset for each letter is determined by another text called the key so start transforming your scissor cipher into a vinegar cipher by removing the two function calls so the only thing we are required in this step is to get rid of the two function calls and run our code and it passes and we proceed to the next step so now modify your function declaration change the function name into vinegar and the second parameter into key so we head into where we declared our function earlier and change the name caesar to vinegar and the second parameter which is offset into key and let's check our code and it passes let's proceed to the next step which is step number 58 delete delete your shift variable then declare a new variable called custom key and assign the value of the string python to this variable so we need to get rid of this shift variable here declare a new variable called custom underscore key and assign it a value of python 
delete your shift variable we have done that then declare a new variable called custom key we have that and assign the value of the string python to this variable we have that so let's check our code and it passes so let's proceed to the next step now step number 59 since your key is shorter than the text that you will have to to encrypt you will need to repeat it to generate the whole encrypted text so at the beginning of your function body here declare a key index variable and set it to zero so at the beginning of the function body which is inside the block obviously declare a key so we need to declare a new variable called key underscore index and set it to zero and set it to zero and uh, let's check if that's correct and it is let's proceed to the next step and that is step number 60 the last one for this video when coding readability is key that's true comments serve as effective notes explaining the logic behind your code they prove valuable when returning to a project after some time and also aid your colleagues in understanding the code that's true so basically this step talks more over the importance of comments in your code in python you can write a comment using the ash anything that comes after ash won't be executed so before your if statement that's up here add a comment saying append space to this message so we need to add a comment here saying we should append space to this message so uh, let's add hash and the message is append and let's check our code to be sure everything works correctly and it does so it, we need to do some correction here identification is key so let's check on that append space oh it's to the we did some misspelling here to the message and that works correctly so uh, that is it for this video so that's step number 51 all through step 60 so in the next one we will continue from step 61 through 70 see you in the next one